Another blood red sunset and yet another moon face And still another hundred miles to my next resting place Driving down the road, eyes on the horizon Within my car I'm all alone But feeling good and feeling strong Knowing that this path I'm on brings me to myself I'm driving Hey y'all, I'm Jules. Welcome back to another episode of Spirit Sherpa, the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. With me as always is the spirit doctor, Kelly Sparta. Hey Kelly, what's up? Hey Jules, it is pouring cats and dogs here, but you know, that is nothing new. It is <laughs> the rainy season right and on will be for quite some time. <laughs> yes, eight months out of the year. So, Oh man, and so the dog's doing his pacing ritual there? Yeah, well, he's, he, no, he's laid down. So it's just raining. It's not thundering yet. So he's all right. He only freaks out when it, it starts to thunder. And, you know, to be honest with him, I am not, I don't really blame him. Some of the thunder here is the loudest thunder I've ever heard in my entire life. And it just goes kaboom. And you're like, what the hell just happened, man? Yeah. So. Yeah, I can't blame him on that. Although he has actually calmed down uh, from where he was when we were in Richmond. He's much more calm in thunderstorms now. I think it's because they happen almost every day. So, you know, it's either get used to it or have a heart attack. You know, <laughs> it's like there's no real getting around it. So, yeah. But, yeah. So we're, we're two one one. Yeah. And, well, today we had um, a fabulous day down here in Louisiana. We had a cool front that came in, and it was 65 degrees this morning, <laughs> as opposed to 117. Yeah, yeah, that was crazy. So it heated up today. I think the high was like 89, 90, which is so much nicer, um, <laughs> you know, than <laughs> what it has been. But yeah, there's a reason I live in the mountains. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't blame you there. Here, I'm like, wow, too hot, too hot. Yeah. So, if I've ever had a reason to lose some weight, it's it's being here in the humidity and the heat. It's like I need less insulation. I need it badly. You know. <laughs> so so you're self adjusting. <laughs> I, I have. I've dropped like ten pounds just being here. It's like I'm I'm I, I think I sweat it all out to be honest. But you know, just just because you know I'm eating fresh fruit and I'm walking more and I'm sweating more and you know. So they pretty much everybody says they lose weight just moving here. So I don't know. I need what to look into is. that then. Yeah, go figure. Huh? <laughs> Come on figure. down. Right. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so today we are going to be talking about um, the elements of transformation and what to expect. Yes. You know, it's been a while since we've talked about this. We we've, we've been sort of way off in in doing a whole bunch of other things here and there. And you know, the core of the work that I do in the world is transformation, and I use magic to support it. But you know, transformation is my bag, and I'm like, you know, I haven't talked about that in a long time. I might want to think about talking about it again. So here we are. Uh, if you're old and you've been around for a long time, not not in age, but in, you know, podcast time, <laughs> if you've been here since the beginning and, and for some of you, that's not old. I, I, I keep hearing people. We've, we're at like episode, what number episode are we now? Uh, like this is two, number 273. 273. Holy crap. Right. We're at episode 273. And I, I'm, I'm keep hearing from people when I, when I talk to them, they're like, Oh yeah, I've, I've binged the whole thing in the last month. And I'm like, what? <laughs> In a month. <laughs> I'm like, now that is some commitment right there. Ooh, so, that's some overachievers there. Good yeah, Lord. yeah. There's some people in the Netherlands right now who are doing this. You know how I know that? Because I am charting in the Never Netherlands for the first time in the last two days, and I'm like number 16 in spirituality in the Netherlands. That's what we're doing right now. Um, this podcast is at number 16, and. So that means somebody in the Netherlands is downloading all of the freaking episodes, right? It's like, bang, because we went from not charting at all to being number 16 in Apple Podcasts for the Netherlands. So whoever you are, thank you. Thank you. Hello. We love you. And, and tell, tell your, your neighbor. Friends. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to keep the podcast. 
Already going. Yeah. So, you know, it, so you may, you may not even have been here that long, but if you started from the beginning, you'll have heard some about transformation is basically what that comes down to. And so we're going to talk about it, uh, but we're going to talk about it in a different way today. There's like a hundred different ways to look at the transformational process and the, about what you need for transformation. And because so many people are going through foundational deconstruction right now, I mean, it is rampant right now. There's so many people. And, and for the record, foundational deconstruction is the, the act of up-leveling your identity, it's literally pulling out the foundation of who you believe yourself to be, sitting on the fallow ground of I don't know who the fuck I am, and waiting for the new foundation to emerge from the ground and say this is this is who you actually are. And resisting the urge, resisting the urge to go out and find the foundation little stones and shove them in the ground because you think you know who you are, because you don't. You the person you believe yourself to be is the person you have been conditioned to believe yourself to be by your parents, by your family, by your friends, by your community, by your country, by your language, by everything you've ever experienced. It is not who you actually are. And so the emergence of self is the piece that we have the hardest time with. And so... This is what so many people are going through. They're going, well, you know, I mean, you're seeing it all the time in, in the great resignation, in the quiet quitting, in the fuck this, I'm out stuff that's going on, right? And it's, I refuse to buy into the cultural programming that says that this is what I should want out of life is basically what that's saying. When you do that, there is a great chance that you are also going to say, I refuse to buy into what other people or who other people have told me I am. And when you do that, suddenly life gets a little more complicated because you're going, okay, so if I'm not that person, then who am I? And you don't really know because you've been out of touch with that person for a very long time. I mean, if you think about it as children, we come in and we are who we are, right? But then, you know, don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do the other thing. Be this way. That boys are this way. Girls are that way. Blah, 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 blah. Right? All the garbage gets installed. Much of it, most of it, before we are at the age of reason to be able to say, do I want this or not? Right? Is this good for me or not? Right. And so this is how we end up neurotic. But, you know, <laughs> magic's real. No, it's not. Oh, Unicorns yes, it are is. real. No, there's not. Dragons yeah. are real. No, it's not. I see Grandpa. No, you don't. He's dead. But, he's dead. I, but he's sitting right there. But he's right there. <laughs> right. He's, he's yeah. right. That's mom. There's a vortex in my room. And no, there's not. <laughs> yeah, there actually is. <laughs> there are monsters under my bed. No, there's not. So. There's all kinds of stuff. And so, uh, you know, this is what's going on right now is foundational deconstruction for everybody. And so um, I want to talk about the elements of transformation, but I also want to couch them and frame them in the, the language of foundational deconstruction because uh, in, or in the framework of that, because that's what I'm seeing so many people going through. Right. And so let's talk about the elements, right? So the, the, the very first piece is the awareness that you need to change something because change doesn't happen unless you know that you need to make it happen, right? Or unless it's forced upon you from the outside, but then, then there's massive resistance and all sorts of other fun stuff. We're going to talk about this from a conscious internal job process. So I'm not going to talk about external change. Okay. So the first thing is you have to be aware that you need to make change. That's step one. Step two is you have to be willing to question the beliefs that got you there. You know, the beliefs, the assumptions, you know, all of the behaviors, everything, right? And then that also includes, however, questioning who you think you are. So all of the beliefs that I've, that I think that I, this is my belief. It actually might not be my belief. It may have been, I'll say, thrust upon me, you know, with with everything growing up. So so unicorns are real. No, they're not. So so now as an adult, I believe unicorns are not real. 
you know, they're just, they're, they're my imaginary friend growing up. When come to find out, poof, they're there. <laughs> okay. So, and, and, you know, it can be anything from mundane beliefs of, you know, you know, rich people are evil to magical beliefs of, you know, unicorns don't exist. Right. Um, you know, anywhere in between, you know, money makes you bad. You know, there's all kinds of things, you know, if we're, we're doing that, there's all kinds of day-to-day beliefs that you also have to question, right? You know, you got to work hard. You got to, so it's better to give than to receive. These are, these are foundational beliefs that form a mindset. And I, I'm, I said money multiple times because the vast majority of my listeners are in the U.S. And so the U.S. has a really cracked perspective of uh, deifying productivity. And so this idea that we have to be productive in order to have value and worth, that doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. It's only in the U.S. It is a completely twisted perspective of personal value. Okay. But this is how culture plays into it. Right. And there are some other cultures that, you know, several, I don't want to say a lot, but, but some of the Asian cultures are family first. The individual doesn't matter. Family and community matter. And so that's its own sort of dynamic as well. Right. I I can say that the U S is fucked up because I am from the U S but I'm not going to pass judgment on other people's stuff. Right. But, but everybody's got their own things and they, the, the belief structures are set up to support the culture that they're in. And so you have to recognize that having been raised in whatever culture you're raised in, you were raised with, with underlying assumptions and belief that beliefs that that culture inculcated into you. And then you have familial belief structures that your family line has these stories that run through the family line that were built into you. And, you know, you, these are the things that you have to recognize as you start to get conscious about your personal evolution, that these are things that are, are this is the software that came installed with your childhood, right? And so as we get further along in life and we're digging out the bugs that were created by the trauma, right? Then once we get past the trauma bugs, now we've got to look at how do we upgrade the software, right? And so, um, you know, when we're looking at this, it's sort of a, a way to look at it, right? So you have to start to question everything. And that leaves people going, oh, I don't know what, blah, 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 right? Um, but it's part of it, right? And so, you know, you do it a stage at a time, right? You don't do it all at once because that'll fuck with your head. Uh, but what that means is that you have to be willing to let go of the person that you used to be or the person that you are right now, you can't be attached to being this person. That means, and this takes us back to the episode on pride, right? Pride goeth before a fall, right? Pride is about, I am who I am. And I look at me, I'm, I like this person and I'm attached to this person and I am proud of who I have become, blah, 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 blah. Right. But the problem is, is that when you attach yourself to the pride of who you've become, then you, you limit yourself from becoming anything more. You kind of stunt your growth because you're stuck in that belief and you could actually be D something else even greater than that which you are currently, but you can't see the forest for the trees because you're stuck in that limiting belief. Exactly. And the further you go in your process, the harder it is to see your own limiting beliefs and your own assumptions. Because assumptions are not visible to you because they're at they're at an unconscious level, right? So we assume that we're not going to float up off the ground because we assume gravity is going to work, okay? How often have you thought of gravity in your life? Almost never, right? Correct. Yeah. So that's an assumption. And so when your assumptions are limiting you, how often are you going to become aware of them? Almost never. You have to see assumptions in reflection, they, they're only seen in reflection. They're only seen in my outcomes aren't working. Why are my outcomes not working? What's the pattern of things that happen where my outcomes don't work? Okay, these are the patterns. What, what are my beliefs? What do I assume is going to happen that isn't happening? 
or what am I, you know, what is all of this? There's, there's questions to ask yourself in there, right? Does that also bleed into like, for an example, <clears throat> one of the things that I was brought up with, you know, that you can trust family, and, you know, as long as they're blood related, it's like, oh, that's family. You always give them the benefit of the doubt that they're not going to screw you over, you know? So people with the, people. exactly. So would that be like, it's, it's assumed, oh yeah, Johnny, he really does need the money. He's not just, you know, looking for a handout. He really needs the money or they wouldn't lie to me. That kind of thing. So well, does that include those type of assumptions also? Yeah, it is. It is all assumptions. It's it's all, you know, definitions, right? Any the, there's a reason and you've been through my programs now. And so, you know, that there's a whole section where we define define core words because those definitions form because they are part of our language and our language forms the way we think. The way we define core terms defines the way that we think. And so if your term definitions are tweaked or internally inconsistent, then you have problems that you won't ever be aware of because nobody ever sits down and defines core words in their day-to-day -day life, right? These are the sorts of things that you have to start doing if you want to really do a higher level of personal transformation. And when we're talking foundational deconstruction, this is a really high level personal transformation process. OK, it, it says I've dealt with the things that are that are freaking me out and shutting me down on a regular basis. And now I'm ready to question a deeper level of myself and, and be able to evolve that part of myself, which is evolve is sort of a weird word because it's not really an evolution. It's, it's more of an uncovering of self. It's that, um, Kathy tells the story about the artesian well. Have I told that here? I can't remember. But I can't remember. So we'll refresh anyway, the listeners. going to tell it again. <laughs> yes. So Kathy tells the story of we're all an artesian well, which means that we're a spring, right? We, we have water that comes flowing forth from us on a regular basis without, uh, without needing a pump or anything else. We are a font of spirit and, and happiness. As we're oozing. We are. We are <laughs> oozing joy. Yes. And unconditional love. And what happens is over the course of our lives, garbage gets thrown in the well. And it gets thrown in the well to the point where the well is no longer producing water because the, the garbage is holding it down. And then the only water that's in the well is the rainwater that can, collects on top of the garbage. And so you feel like you have a lack of joy and a lack of unconditional love because you have lost access to the font of it and are now living off of the rain. Okay. And so this process is literally pulling the garbage out of the well, right? But the, the first thing you have to do is begin to recognize that the water that you see on the top is not you, right? The water you see on top is the rainwater that you've carefully collected and hoarded trying to get by. Okay. So I'm going through my everyday life and I'm just, I have this rainwater that I think is actually me, but it really isn't because I have all this crap underneath that I've forgotten it's there, not really paid attention to. So I got to clean out all that crap. Okay. So, so I have to be aware that I need to change something, you know, so, something's got, something's got, something's got to give sometime. Um, then willing to question what I think I know about all these things because I really don't know what I think I know, but I don't know that I don't know them. <laughs> I Say almost that one three times fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So then how so then what would be the, the next part of that? You have to be willing to let go of that that assumption about yourself, that belief about yourself, that identity, right? And then the next piece is choosing who you want to be. Well how do I know who I want to be? Well, there's a question now, isn't it? So I, I often look at this as a way of saying, okay, um, how would I feel if, right? Because we often have value systems that have been placed upon us, right? So our parents in particular are really good at giving us value systems. Churches, religious institutions, amazing at giving us value systems. And 
we buy into them because we want approval. And we say, okay, I want your approval. I will live this way. The problem is that they may not be our values. <laughs> so now I'm, now I'm trying to live up to somebody else's values. Well, so inevitably you will live your life by your values. Okay. The problem isn't living your life by your values because that's going to happen. The problem is not judging yourself by someone else's. <laughs> yeah. So this is about getting in touch with your values and acknowledging that you're going to live your life by your values and looking at it and saying, okay, well, this is, you know, I may not, I may be mad at myself for having, you know, quit this job that my parents said was such a good job and they were so excited for me to have and whatever, but I was miserable at it and, you know, blah, 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 blah. I mean, I've talked about this before. My dad's idea of, you know, if you're unhappy at your job, you suck it up and you, you double down and you just make it work. And my idea is if you're miserable at your job, you quit it and find a better job, you know, and we just could not see eye to eye on that no matter what. He said, you know, see, you just have no commitment, no stick to it in this. And I said, see, you're committed Committed to misery, you know? <laughs> and, and so you know it was it was an inherent mismatch in the value structure, right? And you know a lot of this is also a function of the times, right? So you know, Dad lived through the Vietnam War and the draft and all of this stuff, right? And then in his day, things were different than they were for me growing up. There was no internet. There was no, you know, a lot of things that that shaped my existence. You know, he had a two-parent household. It was it was not a great household, but it was there, right? And I had a single parent household. And so, you know, that's an inherent difference. And, you know, just all sorts of pieces and parts. He had a sibling I didn't. That's enough to be a difference, right? So these are things that that we have to acknowledge when we see that there are differences in values, right? But inherently, if you're doing foundational deconstruction, you need to be looking to your values, not to the values of your parents or your church or your culture or whatever. You need to look at your values and say, what do I think is important? What do I feel I want for my life? You know, is my definition of success the same or different than the cultural definition of success that exists around me? Right. And then, you know, really dig into that <clears throat> and really be with your values. And rather than I, I probably said this badly, the choosing who to be, because it's really not about choosing who you're going to be. It's about living your life according to your values. If you can define your values, if you can be clear about what you believe in and who about what you believe in and what's important to you, that defines who you will be. Because if you live in accordance with those values, that determines who you become, right? And so each, each choice you make in life needs to be in alignment with those values. It's like, okay, so I believe in being kind to others. Okay, well, I'm not going to kill anyone today, right? <laughs> That's Some days are more challenging than others. Well, yes, but you know. <laughs> But right. in general, we don't do that, right? right. In general, I'm not going to kill anyone. I believe in, in freedom. Freedom is a big thing for me. So I'm not going to commit a crime that's going to get me put in jail, right? Freedom huge for me, right? I'm, I'm, I believe in uh, having everything that I need. I believe that the universe uh, takes care of me. So I'm not going to live in fear, right? I'm going to live in expectation that my charmed life is going to bring me what I need, right? And I'm not going to fret about it because this is who I believe. This is what I believe. You, these are different pieces and parts, right? But that's the general concept. Make sense? Yes. Okay. So the next piece is commitment. And this is where a lot of us fail. And it's because we live in an ADD world and we live in a world of uncertainty. And I don't know if I can do that or not. I'll let you know later, right? It's the especially in the new age community, I got to say, it's one of the biggest flaws in the new age community is just this tendency to go, well, if it feels right to me, I'll show up. Yeah. You I'm know? just, I'm not feeling that today. So we're just going to do something else. Right. Um, when, you know, five people have depended upon you for that and whatever. Right. And it's like, hmm, yeah. So there's a, and, and, you know, some things you can do that with, 
you know, if it's like, oh, I, I'm going to go to the beach today. Well, I don't feel like going to the beach today. You know, OK, I'm going to do something different. Right. No big deal. Right. But it's it's the it's the lack of commitment to a process. It's the flitty, flitty Lulu thing. Right. It's that he 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 lacking lacking grounding and and uh, commitment to things. If you flit around, it's, here's the thing. Flitting around, there's nothing wrong with flitting around when there's no no goal in mind, when there's no purpose, right? If your only purpose is to have a good time, flitting around is perfect, okay? There is a time for everything. And having a good time, being in your bliss, having a, a you know, being in the moment, whatever, all of that, great for flitting around. Great for just going with the flow and feeling into the energy of the space and being with it. Fabulous. If you're trying to get somewhere, you need to ground. You cannot live up in Flitland if if you're trying to get somewhere. And especially if you're trying to do your own work. Because when you do your own work, you're going to hit resistance. And Flitland is basically the same thing as ADD Squirrel Land. And that is an avoidance resistance, which will keep you from getting where you're going by going squirrel, 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 squirrel right tiny. Hi. 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 Mine. 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 Right? Yeah. It's like that. Right? So I'll worry about it tomorrow. Yes. And so that's why commitment's important. Is you have to say, I am choosing this. I'm choosing it every day, no matter what. It is a come hell or high water commitment. Okay. Until I have a reason to seriously reconsider this decision, I will not. Okay. It's, it's the same thing that people do when like, you're going to, you do your new year's resolution to go to the gym every day. Right. And people usually make it two, three days. Right. <laughs> and then they're like, Oh, I'm tired. I'm going to sleep in. Right. You know, the, it, to commit, you literally have to not give yourself permission to not do it. Okay. That's what commitment is, is I give, I don't give myself permission to not do this. I must do this every day, come hell or high water, no matter what. And I don't break the commitment to myself, right? And so I literally don't give myself permission to think about not doing it. Because the moment you give yourself to permission to think about not doing it, then then all bets are off. You're screwed, <laughs> right? The moment you give yourself permission to consider it, you're, you're, you're done. done. You're yeah. done. Right. It's like, nope, we're doing this. We are not having the discussion about why not to do it. That is not happening. And commitment creates consistency, which is the next piece consistency is required. You have to make the same choice over and over and over again in order to get where you want to go. Think of it like walking from California to Maryland, right? If you keep changing direction every 30 seconds, you're never getting to Maryland, right? So you got to stay on course. You pick the path and you commit to the path. You take consistent forward action to the path. You don't walk backwards. You don't squirrel off in a sideways direction. You keep going, right? That's consistency. And you, and you don't let the distractions distract you. Yes. You don't stop and go, oh, I'm tired. Maybe I'll just sit here. <laughs> Maybe I'll just sit here. That's how you end up in Kansas. <laughs> yes. Yes, <laughs> Dorothy. Yes. <laughs> so, um, no, no offense to those in Kansas, but Kansas is very flat. So it's very long. I was driving cross country. I was trying to get to Colorado. I went across Kansas. I'm like, God damn, this, this state never ends. So, and it's all flat and there's nothing but tumbleweeds. And I'm just like, shit, man. All right. So no offense to Kansas, but that was my personal trauma. So I apologize. Okay. <clears throat> but you kept going and you made I kept it. going and I got to. You did not Colorado. veer off. <laughs> I did not veer off. I did not pass go. I did not collect $200. Yes. That's it. That's <laughs> it. Oh my God. So, um, and then here's, here's the hard part. Okay. And Wait, we so haven't gotten to the hard part yet. Are you kidding me right yet. now? <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> Hold on, kids. It's about to get a little bumpy. <laughs> yeah. So th these last two pieces are, th are the hard part, right? Which is a willingness to be with uncertainty. I don't know who the hell I am. Who the hell am I? I don't know. I'm not sure. Right. And discomfort because the discomfort will be physical at times. I have literally had the sense of like, 
feeling like ants were crawling all over my body. I was so uncomfortable, right? You have to be willing to be with it and use it as fuel for your change rather than trying to dissipate it, which is what most of us do when we get uncomfortable. In fact, it's what we're trained to do. If you watch American TV shows and movies, what happens when someone's unhappy or sad? What are you supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Uh, that yeah. would, I'm going to grab Helpful. a friend and yeah, yeah, go, go get it, go get help. Really? Are you actually getting help? No, we're just talking about it and going around in a circle until I feel better about it. Is that what you see in movies? What I see in movies is let's go drink and or eat, eat our feelings with ice cream. Oh, well, that too. Yeah, yeah. Same. So, okay. See, I left that part out. Yeah. While I'm sitting there and I'm telling Kelly all my problems, we're eating ice cream and then afterwards we're drinking some wine. Yes. So, you know, yes. well, I am anyway. So, so. We're, we're eating our feelings and we're drinking yes. to numb out. That is what we're taught to do, which is dissipating the energy of change. Okay. So I worry about it tomorrow. And it, <laughs> and we, and, oh my gosh. I'm I'm so, gonna I'm gonna numb out and not and and not pay attention to my feelings by drinking, or I'm gonna eat my feelings and I'm gonna try and compensate for my misery with my sweet yummy ice cream, right? It's it's a it's a way in which we dissipate the cognitive dissonance of the thing that has put us in upheaval inside, and the upheaval that is inside of us is the fuel to change if we don't dissipate that energy. If instead you use that energy, and you've seen this happen. You've seen this happen with people who have broken up with a, a bad boyfriend or a, a you know a, a abusive husband or you know whatever, right? Where they've gotten out of the relationship and they have suddenly just changed their entire freaking lives and they're a totally new person. Those are people who took the, the discomfort, the uncertainty, the stirred upness, and used it as fuel to make change in their lives. They said no more to the thing that had been before. They used all of that upset to say no more to that and to choose a new path and to become a new person in the process of choosing the new path. Yep. I actually have I actually have have a friend who is going through that and and it was interesting because I said, "Well, she's like, I don't know what to do." I'm like, "Well, what do you like to do?" She says, "I don't know what I like to do because we always for 20 years did what he liked to do." I said, "Well, guess what? This is an awesome opportunity. Sign up for an art class. Go, you know, paint and drink wine in the class thingies. You know, sign up for chef school. I don't care. Go do dance classes. See what you like to do. And this, it, her eyes were like a deer in headlights because she was like, oh, my God, I can choose me. I'm like, oh, my God, yes, yes. So it's so cool. And it changes everything. It changes everything, right? But culturally, we're taught not to use that energy. Culturally, we're taught to dissipate it. And that's how we stay stuck where we are, is because everything we see in the media says, eat your feelings and drink your, your numbness. So this is a complete 180 from that. It's take all of that stirred up energy and use it. Use it to declare that your life will be different. Use it to put a line in the sand that says this far and no further for, for your bullshit over there, right? I'm not putting up with that shit anymore. I am not being this person anymore. I am choosing me, right? Whatever it is, but, but use it instead of lose it. I like that one. Use it instead of lose it. I like that one. Now, would this be the same, same thing, the dissipation as like, Let's say there's a family dynamic where, you know, it's a family belief structure you've been taught since you were little. You just don't get divorced that we we're, we're so and so such and such family divorce. We just don't do that. You just have to make your husband happy no matter what or wife, whatever the thing is. And, and so all of that. So it's like, OK, here's Sue over here. She's like once out. She's built up all this energy. But then it's like. Oh, just it's fine. So now she develops 
you know, probably very bad habits to try and cope and dissipate that energy when really if she would act on it, you know, get herself out and really be true to her authentic self, right? But the, the that and this is a great example because this is an example of uh, the family defining the person. You have a choice to be the married person that we approve of, no matter how miserable you are, or the black sheep of the family who ruined our perfect score in staying married, right? And they are, they're providing you with personal definitions from a familial context. And you buy into the idea that you have to choose between those two things. And those are not your only choices. Yep. I see you down at the, excuse me, bridal shop whenever she's like, well, mom wants, she always dreamed of me being a princess. Well, what do you want? I don't know, but I can't get a gown unless mom approves. You know, that whole thing. It's, it's all of that. You know, a lot of that is true. You know, the, you know, the mothers gave up their vision so that their mothers could have the wedding of their dreams. And now they expect their daughters to do the same thing. Do the same thing because it was done and it was a, it's a, That's how it's done. Well, maybe not. Maybe you just got screwed, you know? (laughs) Maybe that's not how it should be done, and you should be the loving parent and let them break the cycle and have what they want because it is their day, right? Yeah. Uh, But, you know, these are the things that we go through, and and families are the worst, right? (laughs) Because they love to define us, especially parents, who are like, oh, you're my little five-year-old. It's like, no, I haven't been five in 50 years. You know, it's like, maybe maybe you could update your definition of me just a little bit, right? Just a little bit. But it's their definition, not my definition. So we're, we're going to break those chains that bind. And we're going <laughs> to transform. And that's awesome. And And so as you're going through foundational deconstruction, which a lot of us are right now, and, you know, part of that is because of the pandemic and we went through the forced hermitage, which was an initiation, whether you want to believe it or not, it was an initiation. And that process of initiation brought us into relationship with ourselves because so much of American culture in particular is designed to keep you from paying attention to you. And smartphones have made it even worse because we're constantly in our screens, right? It's like, oh, I'm going to binge Netflix for the next six hours so I don't have to think about my life. I'm going to be in my screen and doom scroll on Facebook for the next 20 hours because I, you know, other people's misery or happiness is better than looking at me, right? That's what we've been trained to do culturally for generations, but it's so much worse today than it was 20 years ago before smartphones. And this process that we had in the pandemic of going inside, having not enough to entertain us, to distract us, being sick to death of our screens and wanting to turn them off and then going, now what do I do, right? I'm alone with myself or my (laughs) spouse or my children. Right. (laughs) And Ah, all of them, and everything shut down, and I can't get away from them. Yes. And there's, you know, this moment of crystallization of your discontent that happened where you couldn't run away from what you were unhappy with. And now it's in your face. There's huge numbers of people who got divorced. Okay. You know, people were talking about a baby boom when the pandemic first hit, and it's a baby bust, right? And it's a divorce boom. <laughs> it's a divorce boom. Exactly. Because people got really clear about what they were avoiding. And that process is continuing because once you start to wake up, there's no going back to sleep. And so it's only going to evolve further. And now people are expanding that. It's like, okay, I, I dealt with, I was unhappy in my relationship. All right. Now my job sucks. Let's look at that. I couldn't look at it when we were in the pandemic because I couldn't leave my job because I was stuck there. And by God, if I had a job, I was lucky, but I'm not there anymore. So buckle up, buttercup. (laughs) Shit's coming down, right? And that's that's where people are right now is they've gone from family to job, right? I'm not working 85 hours a week anymore. Exactly. And mark my words. The next thing that's going to come is 
spiritual connection. It's going to be your belief structures, your connection to more than yourself, right? Your connection to yourself, your, you know, your inner, your inner world, right? Some people did that during the pandemic. Others did not. Others were just stuck in the misery and trying to do other things and fighting with their spouse and trying to deal with the kids and ah, 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 right. And that was fine. I mean, I'm not saying that there's a good or bad or indifferent. Everybody is where they were. But the, the point is, is that there's once the job stuff's done, then you, you have time to go, okay, well, I'm not working 80 hours a week anymore. And I'm not with the person who was making me miserable anymore. Now what? This this making my life better thing kind of rocks. Maybe I had to work on that some more. What's the next piece? And the next piece is you, which is where the foundational deconstruction is coming in, right? Because you're finally starting to live according to your values and not according to the values of your culture or your family or, you know, whatever, right? And so that's the piece where a lot of people are right now. They're ripping out that foundation and then they're feeling the discomfort, not knowing that they're not supposed to eat their feelings and numb their pain and instead supposed to use that energy to make more change. And so this is why it was so important for me to talk about this in this episode is because it's happening so much right now. I mean, it's everywhere. Uh, it's like, I would say 80% of the people in my programs are going through it. And, you know, Kathy's and I were talking and some of her friends are going through it. And it's just like, like, yep, it's going and I'm going through it and Kathy's going through it. And I mean, it's just, there's just, it's going, it's happening. Right. So if this is something that you're dealing with, you know, hopefully this episode helps. And if you want to learn more about your resistances and you want to learn more about the things that are keeping you stuck, then, you know, consider coming in and talking to us about the inner peace one-on-one course or, uh, and, and I'm going to announce it now. <laughs> uh Oh, I, I have a new, I have a new thing coming. Uh, it, it's here. Um, and it is called the liminality program and you will not find it on the website. You have to just sign up for a discovery call and, the liminality program is for people who are further along in their process, who've done a lot of the beginner level stuff, but who are looking for a higher level of support for a deeper, le deeper level of work. And it is a six month or one year program, one on one with me or Kathy, one on one, weekly calls, wait, weekly wait, calls, wait, wait. weekly, weekly calls, half an with hour you or with Kathy. me or Kathy. Holy wow. And cool. Voxer, Voxer support in between. So you can be like, I'm having a meltdown. And I'll, assuming I'm not on another call, I'll be like, okay, let's talk. What's going on? Right. So yeah, it's like, you know, it's, it's a deep level of work with customized. And there's a customized program that we create just for you based on this in-depth process that we do when you first come in. We do a, an energy scan or a business energy scan if you're a business owner. Um, and we, based on the, the energy scan, we look at ancestral line stuff. We look at etheric body. We look at pain body. We look at, um, I'm missing something, astral uh, stuff. So, you know, curses and things like that that could be there. Uh, outside influences. We do a complete spiritual comprehensive diagnostic and based on that we custom design a coursework for you and then we work with you one-on-one -on -one to work through it for the six month or the year-long process so when i say it is a bespoke program high level it really is and as such you know yeah it's going to be more expensive but you know that's that's the nature of it but you know it's going to be awesome well, that it is. I mean, and, and what a support system, too, you know, because um, one thing I was going to ask very quickly would be as someone's going through this um, deconstruction and rebuilding and doing this transformation, um, their social circles are also may also shift. Will too. also shift. Not yeah, I, may. I wanted to say will and I wasn't <laughs> sure. So I said may. They so, will because you will and, outgrow your friends. Every Yeah. Time. Yeah. Yeah. And, th and that's a, from my experience, it has been a good thing because, um, the 
toxic nature of, of some relationships that goes bye bye. And then actually these weird, not weird, weird as in timing and unexpected new friendships that are much healthier and much more in sync um, with where you are now or where I am now and all, they just kind of go poof. And I'm like, well, how did that happen? But it's, it's really neat. Um, you know, like minds type of thing. And then, um, you know, like, Chris, you know, like I'm into crystals and all that. So I somehow me, me and other crystal people, we find each other, you know, um, and, and it, it was it was very cool. So y'all would be and it, and with having worked with both you and Kathy, um, y'all are a phenomenal support because, you know, when, when I call and I'm in a puddle on the floor, <laughs> I need some help. And y'all have been there for me, you know, because I'm like, oh, I don't know what to do. And you're like, all right, chill out. It's all right. Here's what you're going to do. Da, 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 da. OK. OK, I feel better now. You know, so that that is phenomenal. So uh, so to um, to review for our listeners, they would sign up for a discovery call. They would sign up for a discovery call with Heather and Heather will walk them through the process of, of what it takes to be in the program and how that works. And and in the course of the spiritual diagnostic uh, process and the interview process that we do around that, we would determine which one of us, me or Kathy, would be better for them to work with based on what it is that you're working on, what what your goals are for your personal process, where you are in your process and things like that. So we would we would determine that based on which one of us you'd be working with. Um, uh, or we would determine which one of us you would be working with based on what your goals are, I, is better way of saying that. I, I realize I just like did that completely backwards, but you could tell I, pl- I practiced this, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Our, our, list, our listeners yeah. followed. They were like, yep, I knew what she meant. <laughs> right back. Right. It's completely. Yeah. yeah. So we, we hook you up with the person who's the right person for the job, basically is what it comes out, down to. Right. And, um, because, you know, Kathy and I have different backgrounds and different, different, uh, expertises. Right. So, and, uh, you know, there's personal healing work in there. There's all kinds of stuff. So, you know, it's, it's about as, as, um, close to apprenticing, you know, apprenticing is the wrong word, but it's, it's, it's a one-on-one relationship, right? Yeah. So, uh, like mentorship. It's thank you. That's the word I was looking for mentor, not apprentice mentorship. It is actually a mentorship. So, um, if that's something that interests you, sign up for a discovery call. And if you're thinking, I don't want to do the heavy, hardcore thing, I want to do the beginner thing, sign up for a discovery call or sign up online. You can do that. Uh, the Inner Peace program is available on the website. So you can sign up direct there. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think that does it for today. Yeah, I think so. So yeah. now, is there a uh, transformational Kellyism for today? Oh, yes. Use it, don't lose it. <laughs> I so like that one so much. All right. Um, yeah. And as, I, as always, we'll have all the information down in the show notes for y'all. Um, but that is all that we have for this week, kids. Tune in next time when Kelly adds another chapter into your guide to energy, magic, and the spirit world. I'm Jules, here with Kelly Sparta, and you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. So long, everyone. Bye. My next resting place Driving down the road Eyes on the horizon Within my car I'm all alone But feeling good And feeling strong Knowing that this path I'm on Brings me to myself I'm driving